Hi, I've decided to try something new with this video and walk you through what my journaling process looks like. I've mentioned my journal before in other videos, and ever since I made my stationary video, I'd gotten a lot of questions about how I use the materials that I buy. So I thought I'd make this chill video for you to play in the background, maybe while you draw or fold laundry, or you can journal alongside me. I'm going to briefly show you examples of what my earlier Japan journals look like, so you can see how my style has sort of changed and progressed to suit my current lifestyle. As you might notice, my very first Japan journal is extremely wordy. There is a lot more writing than I would normally do now, and that's mostly because I had a lot more time on my hands when I first moved here. I had to wait for my computer stuff to come in, and I was spending a lot more time exploring, you know, new country and everything. So my entries were a lot more fleshed out and descriptive. And this is also when I started going to a lot of anime cafes. So I'd use my journal to write down notes about the food to refer to when I made my collab cafe videos. And then eventually, I got my hands on an instant camera and I started using Polaroid photos to add visuals to my journal entries, which ended up being really helpful when I didn't want to write entire paragraphs because a single picture and a caption could tell me everything I needed to remember the moment. So for these recorded journaling sessions, I'm actually starting my fifth Japan journal. There are a lot of journal and stationary options here, but for this one, I decided to try out the Midori notebook journals. The camera's not really picking it up, but one of the journals has dotted paper and the other one is blank. I couldn't decide between the two, and normally I prefer dotted paper since it makes it easier to write straight, but for this journal, I decided to try out the completely blank one. One of the things I've brought up in previous videos that I've been asked about is washi tape. And for those of you who don't know, washi tape is a decorative multi-purpose masking tape that you can use for scrapbooking, journaling, letters, or even art. I started collecting washi tape a lot more thanks to my friend Daru, who is also a stationary fiend like myself. One day I told her that I had a really hard time using washi tape because I was scared of it running out, kind of similar to the issue that I have with stickers. And then she told me about this brilliant thing that she does where she keeps a binder filled with a collection of washi tape swatches and she writes down where she gets them from. That way, if she does use up a washi tape roll, she still has a full swatch in her binder and she knows where to get it again if she really wants to replace it. When I tell you, my mind was blown. Like it's such a simple solution to a simple problem and I just for some reason hadn't thought to do it. So I started doing it. I stole the idea from her and now I have my own binder filled with washi tape swatches that I add on to every time I buy a new roll. I found that it's a great way of keeping track of what washi tapes I already own and seeing which brands I'm regularly buying from. But it also makes for a really cute art gallery of all sorts of washi tape designs. And I actually have a couple tapes that I bought recently from an artist called Mugo Bunny, who makes really cute stationary items. So I'll do some washi tape swatching on camera for you. I've actually already prepared a designated washi swatch page for Mugo Bunny because I'm a repeat customer and I knew I'd probably end up getting more tapes from them eventually. Now, when you swatch your tapes, you can just rip off like a small piece of it if you prefer the way that looks more, but I personally like to do a full swatch so I can see the entire tape design before it starts repeating. Sometimes the design goes on a bit longer than expected, in which case I just cut it in half and then I dedicate two rows of space to one tape. I hope that makes sense. Most tapes you come across will be horizontal, but for ones like this shaved ice tape, I have a separate page set aside for my vertical washi tapes. I do try to go out of my way to use up my washi tape since I have quite a bit, so I usually gravitate towards ones that I know I'll reach for pretty often. For instance, this days of the week washi tape from Moogle Bunny is both super cute and really useful in labeling my journal dates. And of course, in addition to washi tape, I love decorating the pages with stickers. And I've brought over a few sheets to work with in this recording. Moving on from the washi tape introduction, I want to briefly introduce you to some of my favorite on-the-go journaling tools. First up, my favorite on-the-go tape cutting tools. I found this itty bitty pair of scissors when I was stationary shopping one day and it was perfect for cutting washi tape because it fits nice and snug in my pencil case and it's okay to take on the plane with you. At least I think it is. 
I have never gotten stopped for having this in my carry-on, so it's made scrapbooking on the plane much easier. And in addition to that, there's also these washi tape cutters, which are made specifically for washi tape. And these are also really nice and compact. And to use it, you simply clamp it over the washi tape roll of your choice, pinch the end of it in place, and then you use it like a regular tape dispenser. It cuts the tape really cleanly. It's amazing. And for Polaroid pictures and various other paper items, you can paste them into your journal with a regular glue stick, which I did for the longest time. But for Polaroid photos specifically, I found that the best way to paste them in with zero mess is by using double-sided tape. It's nice and sturdy, and it doesn't weigh the paper down like glue does. And for some of the other paper items, like maybe some of the thinner ones, I recently really got into glue tape. It's super easy to use, it's portable, and it's less messy than a glue stick while still sticking pretty strong. So I highly recommend picking up glue tape if you like pasting stuff in your journals. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's move on to my actual journal process. So I actually did not start keeping a journal or scrapbook until I moved to Japan. Before then, the last time I kept a journal was back in like middle school. So even though it's been two years now, it still feels like a relatively new hobby for me, and I'm still learning a lot of things from other stationary enthusiasts. Also, side note, I regret every day that I threw away my old elementary and middle school diaries because there was some grade A delicious cringe jam-packed in those pages. I would have made for some amazing dramatic readings. But in my defense, I had no idea I would grow up to be a professional oversharer. So, unfortunate. I just remember I would draw, like, anime depictions of Nicolas Cage. I'm not even kidding. It sucks that, like, I have no proof of this, but I did that, like, unironically, because I had a huge crush on him. I was, like, 11. Don't judge me. Anyways, I started journaling again because after I moved here, I started making a ton of new memories and seeing new things, and I wanted a way to keep track of my experiences so that I wouldn't forget and I'd have something to look back on. I don't know about you guys, but I have... Uh, pretty bad memory and I want a way to remember all the fun things that I do so moving overseas has honestly been one of the most exciting chapters of my life and I wanted to document it in a way that still felt creatively fulfilling for me kind of like a sketchbook but it's also been surprisingly therapeutic it's been really helpful on days where I have a lot of thoughts going on and I want to sort of talk to myself and write down my feelings and take the time to like self-reflect. Also, you would be surprised at the number of useless little paper goods you end up collecting while you're out and about in Japan, especially when you go to any sort of event or pop-up cafe. And of course, as you know, I go to quite a lot of them. I mean, okay, recently not that much, but I go to a lot of them and every single time I will come home with like a tiny collection of free paper stuff that I've received. So rather than throwing them out or adding to my pile of clutter, I like to paste them in my journal so that there's a place for them. And my last reason for why I'm journaling is I just have too many stickers. I never know what to do with them and I have a hard time using my stickers normally, but journaling makes it so I have no regrets with using them all up. So I actually recorded two journaling sessions, which I'll be showing here both about a week apart in late August and early September of last year, which I know is like half a year ago. And honestly, I can't believe I've been sitting on this footage for half a year. I can't believe it's already been half a year in general. I'll be honest, I feel like time has been really escaping me lately. Honestly, it's kind of stressing me out. Recently, I realized I should get around to making my fourth collab cafe video since I'm sitting on cafe footage from like 10 months ago. And I was like, oh, didn't I make my third collab cafe video pretty recently? No, I made it like last year. Those cafes are basically old news now. I mean, I'm still gonna make the video, but the fact that I've been sitting on video footage for that long is a little embarrassing. <laughs> uh, this one included. I've been meaning to make a journal with me video for a while now. But I also figured it probably isn't the type of video that the majority of my audience is all that interested in. But also, this is a channel where I can just talk about my life and my interests. And I feel like that's how I've always operated. 
And journaling and stationery is a big hobby in my life. So I knew it was only a matter of time before I made a video about it. You know, regardless of how many people are interested in that topic. I've been trying to follow a pattern of posting a few IRL footage videos in between my fully drawn videos in an attempt to upload more frequently. Obviously, the videos with lots of drawings take significantly longer to finish, so those will probably still be once a month. Once a month, if I'm lucky. But since I've also been doing a lot more IRL stuff, I've been wanting to pepper them in in between. So right now, I think my current goal is to post like three videos a month, one regular drawn video and two IRL videos. I'm, I'm trying to space out the IRL videos because I really don't want people to think that like my content is pivoting so that I'm no longer drawing. No, I still want to draw like that's still my main thing. But I also, you know, just want to have extra stuff in between so that, you know, I'm still alive and making content, you know? Anyways, we'll see if I'm able to actually achieve all of that on my own. So please wish me luck. As you can probably guess, this one counts as an IRL video. It's a lot longer than usual, and all I have to do is sit here and talk for a while over footage of me journaling. So if you've ever wanted a video where you just listen to me yap for an undetermined amount of time, consider yourself lucky. For my very first entry of Japan Journal number no. five, I'm creating a sort of collage from some materials I picked up from a My Dress Up Darling exhibit that I attended with my friend Emily. Usually when I go to art exhibits or cafes with friends, I'll buy little postcards or stickers from the merch store. Number one, because they're cheap, but also uh, for the sole purpose of using them to document the visit in my journal. Because realistically, what else would I use them for? And when I go to anime cafes, sometimes they have these little paper character flags on a toothpick in the food. You might have seen some of them in some of my older cafe footage, but I like to collect those to also paste in my journal. And it also means I don't have to write nearly as much because I could look back on this entry in like five years and I'll still be like, oh yeah, that's the day I went to the Dress Up Darling exhibit with Emily. No lengthy essay or explanation required. I know writing is super important and kind of the point of journaling as a concept, but I found that I don't have as much time to spend on it in my daily life, at least not as much as I used to. Typically, I'll write the most when I'm on a plane, on vacation, taking notes for a collab cafe video, or when I'm having a particularly bad day and I need to vent out my frustrations to myself and self-reflect. Which can be a little funny because you'll see like five pages of cute Polaroid pictures and little cafe postcards with stickers. And then the next page will be like this giant wall of text of sad or frustrated ramblings. I'm fine, by the way, like mentally, I'm great. We all have our bad days, you know? And I think the really fun thing about journaling is the fact that everyone approaches it differently. I've seen videos on YouTube where people just make full gorgeous artsy collages, which I think is so beautiful and creative. I don't know how to do any of that, but I really like watching it and like hearing the nice crinkly ASMR noises. I've also seen journals where people write in it every single day and they go into incredible detail about what they ate, what the weather was like, and how they were feeling, which I really admire because I personally cannot commit to writing in this every single day. I mean, for starters, I only really ever make an entry if something interesting happened that day and I have little trinkets to show for it. Obviously, on a day where all I did was stay at home and draw, there's not much to talk about, so I won't write anything. I'm, I'm treating the journaling thing as like a, a casual thing. Like I want to be committed to it, but I don't want it to feel like a chore or stress me out, if that makes sense. I used to stress out a little bit about making my journal look neat and orderly and aesthetically pleasing. But similarly to sketchbooks, it's meant for you and the way you want to creatively express yourself and your thoughts. So I eventually figured out a style that best suited my own needs. Even if that means just pasting paper knickknacks I collect from being out and about and writing short segments paraphrasing what I did that day. Now, as you can see, this second entry is about the time I took Connor to the Black Butler Cafe, which will be featured in my next collab cafe video. Uh, and I just want to say I'm very grateful to past Emily for taking the time to write notes about the food because this was all the way back in August. 
And I definitely do not remember what my thoughts were on the food. Okay, so let me show you a quick example of how I utilize my washi tapes. On August 27th of last year, which was my birthday, I went to the beach and spent the day with a big group of girls. And I decided to use one of my beachy ocean wave tapes to border the bottom of the page, since it matched what I happened to be doing that day. And also on that day, some of the girls had gotten stung by jellyfish that were in the water. And I just so happened to have a jellyfish washi tape, so I used it to frame the left side of the page. And then I proceeded to arrange my Polaroid photos accordingly. Now I'd like to say that you don't have to use washi tape or stickers that match whatever your entry is about. You have to remember they're primarily used as decorative pieces, so you can honestly use whatever you think is cute. But if I have tape and stickers that happen to match the subject of the page, then I'll use them. I've seen people arrange their tapes and stickers on a page based on a specific color scheme or the current season or even just a character they really like. It is entirely up to you. I'm just showing you how I use them. The next journaling session was filmed right after I came home from guesting at Anime Impulse in Anaheim, California, also last year. Whenever I guest at conventions, I like to bring a stack of postcards with like a unique design specific to that convention to pass out to people who show up to my meet and greet and signings. And I made sure to save one to paste in my journal. Since the con was located in Anaheim, we made the postcard design Disneyland themed. This was the last convention I attended last year, and this year I'm actually taking a break from conventions. Don't get me wrong, they're always fun to attend and I'm very grateful whenever I'm invited, but I think all the flying and constantly resetting my sleep schedule was way more exhausting than I'd anticipated. I think if I still lived in the States, it'd be a lot easier, but it feels like Japan is just so far away from everywhere. So for this year, I decided I would try and focus more on trying to post more content than I did in 2023. Because when I looked back on the year, at the end of the year, I was kind of disappointed at the few uploads that I posted. So I was like, you know what, I gotta like put my bootstraps on and actually focus on trying to make more stuff. The handler who was in charge of our meet and greet line at Anime Impulse ended up writing me this really sweet letter and they gifted me some stickers and a little drawing. So I thought they'd be the perfect addition to my Anime Impulse pages. Normally I'd use glue tape for this, but at the time of recording, I only had a glue stick, which, which is fine. It just makes the letter a little crinkly. One of the things I really like about guesting at conventions is when viewers gift me drawings, because if they're small enough, I get to paste them in my journal and I get to put together like a little fan art art gallery. Sometimes though, there'll be a really nice letter written on the back of the art, in which case I don't put it in my journal because it would feel kind of bad gluing over it. So if you ever see me at a convention and you gift me art, I will 100% put it in my journal if it's small enough and if there's not like an important letter on the back of it. Since this fan art is of my Strawberry Maid VTuber persona, I added a swatch of one of my strawberry tapes and some strawberry stickers around it. Another thing I really like to do with fan art is make a washi tape border around the edges. Adding to the whole art gallery thing, I think it makes like a really cute frame and makes the drawing pop out when you turn the page. On one of the Anime Impulse days, I dressed up as the waitress version of Ichigo Momomiya from Tokyo Mew Mew, and someone had gifted me a drawing of Ichigo, so obviously I had to make the page themed after that. I'm always looking for any excuse to use up my strawberry tapes because I have way too many. I know I'm technically breaking my don't talk about strawberries for six months promise, but this one doesn't count, okay? this I'm technically still talking about journaling. I will show restraint for literally every other type of tape design. Like I'll be like, oh, this starry sky tape is so cute, but I already have four starry sky tapes. I don't really need a fifth one. Or, ooh, these cherry blossom stickers are really pretty, but I have enough cherry blossom stickers and I already don't use them that often. But then I'll see something with strawberries and I just can't help myself. Another thing I've started doing a lot more often is picking up postcard sized art prints from artist alleys and adding them to my little journal art gallery. I really like buying full size art prints because I can stick them to my wall at home, but I never really knew what to do with postcard prints. 
And it wasn't until I started receiving them as freebies at manga exhibits and anime cafes when I got the idea to just paste them in my journal and use them as decoration pieces. This Tokyo Mew Mew print I got is from the artist Starry Droplets, who makes some really adorable art. And another artist who I purchased a print from was Parakid. I loved their watercolor style, and their stuff happened to be the perfect size for scrapbooking. Little art pieces are my favorite thing to scrapbook with, because number one, I don't have to write anything about it, so I don't have to worry about leaving space for text. And number two, it makes the pages so pleasing to look at, especially when you add in the additional paper decals and tape swatches. I also picked up this Sakura print from Sugar Studio in the Artist Alley and added a simple swatch of my rainy day sticker to the corner and then a strip of fruit washi tape at the bottom to match the green color scheme. The rest of the pages are an arrangement of some of the photos I took during this California trip. I think the biggest difference between my 2022 journals and my current 2024 journal is the sheer amount of instant film photos I use in lieu of text. I like being able to have physical evidence of some of the moments in my day, and they're just a lot of fun to look back on. And I don't know, I also kind of like the washed out crunchy quality that the pictures have when they develop. It kind of adds like a candid camera effect to it. So I personally use a Fujifilm Instax Mini when I take pictures. And for whatever reason, the film is kind of expensive here. And it's really difficult to get my hands on the different film patterns and colors. Like the ones you see here were actually purchased when I visited the States. I just walked into a random Best Buy and got a bunch of different designs for not that much money. And I don't know if instant film is more popular in Japan or something, but anytime I seek these out at like a physical storefront, they're always sold out. Or when they do have like the regular white ones, it's like limit one per customer. So I definitely plan on stocking up on these the next time I visit the States. At this point of the recording, the desk I'm working on looks like a complete disaster, and that would be because I'm scrapbooking like four days worth of journal entries. And I'd like to clarify that normally I like writing my entries on the night of or morning after so that the memory's fresh in my head and I can avoid making a huge mess like this. But for the sake of having enough recording material for this video, I waited until I flew back home to Tokyo to put this all together. I don't really recommend letting too many memorable days stack up before documenting them, because then you'll be sitting there for like two hours like I did. So the last topic I want to touch on is uh, I've gotten a few questions from people asking where exactly I get my stationery and various materials from. And if you're in Japan or you're visiting Japan and looking for a good place to start, I highly recommend the store Loft. It's a multi-level store with regular home goods and beauty products, but the stationary floor is where it's at. It has everything from notebooks, planners, sketchbooks, Copic markers, stickers, washi tape, and too many writing utensils. I actually actively avoid going to Loft now because I'm always tempted to buy something every time I go. I could literally, I, I'm not even I could, I have spent hours in Loft. So for the sake of my wallet's help, I don't go anymore, but you totally should if you get the chance. Also, if you happen to be in the area when the yearly stationary fair Bunga Joshi happens, I also highly recommend going to that because you'll find a lot of unique goods there. I do have a video about it on my channel if you're interested in hearing more about that particular event. Anyways, I think I've talked about journaling for long enough and I hope you enjoyed listening to this voiceover. If you're interested in seeing more journaling sessions, either with voiceover or maybe completely silent with just the sounds of the materials, like one of those ASMR videos, then please let me know in the comments down below. Before you go though, I have one more stationary item to show you really quick, and that would be my newly released monthly planner designed by yours truly. So one of my biggest planner pet peeves is when I want to start one in the middle of the year which makes half of the planner completely empty and useless. And it feels like a waste. And to combat that, I designed this planner to start off with completely empty pages so that you can start on any month of any year. I don't want this to be confusing, so let me show you how I go from an empty month to a fully filled up page ready for planning. The planner comes with sticker sheets for you to label the months with, which include little character stickers that you can match up with the month of your choosing. As you can see, I've 
used some of them already to test out on the planner. And you'll get to see that really quickly. You'll also receive two sheets of mini planner stickers that you can use to label certain days for things like paydays, birthday reminders, deadlines, and travel. So here's how I prepare a month. For this example, I'm going to do August of 2024. First, I'll take the August label and place it on the top left corner of the page. Now you have to be really careful with these stickers because if you mess up, it is pretty much near impossible to remove them from the page to restick it. Next, I pick my corresponding character sticker. You can pick whichever one you want. Personally, I associate the month of August to grueling hot summers. So that's the one I'm going to choose and I'll stick it directly under the monthly label. And since August is my birthday month, I'll use the extra cake sticker and place it on the bottom of the page. Now, all that's left to do is fill in the proper dates for August of 2024. For reference, I'm using my phone calendar just to be extra sure that I don't mess up and I put the dates under the wrong days of the week. I'll label each square all the way to the 31st. And now I have a completed month ready to be used for planning. After this, I'll preemptively label the August birthdays with the birthday reminder stickers so I know which birthdays to look out for this month. And there you have it. Obviously, it requires more work than just buying a planner that has the dates and year printed in it already, but I wanted to be sure that my planner could be fully customizable, and that includes when you actually want to start it, so it's not locked into any specific year or month. If you want to start in July and also the very beginning of the planner, then you absolutely can. The planner also has little bookmark tabs so you can switch between months. You'll receive them blank, but you can number them based on what month you actually start. So for example, I just numbered it how it would look if I started on January. Each month also comes with a few extra pages of lined paper for all your note taking needs. And lastly, there's a couple pages of a checklist in the back where you can keep track of any orders or commissions that you're waiting on. I'm someone who will oftentimes place a pre-order for something or I'll make an online purchase and then completely forget about it. So these pages are here if you want a reminder of what you've already paid for and still need to receive. The boxes are a little hard to see on camera, but once you receive the package or commission you've been waiting for, then you can check it off to indicate that it's been completed. And that's about everything. Planners are currently on pre-order until April 20th when production begins and they'll ship after two months when production ends. The hoodies and love letter tee are also back on pre-order for a second run, so if you're interested in checking any of these out, the link will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching. 